Time now for the business news with Stephen Carroll. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Delano. You're starting out with talks on the NAFTA free trade agreement, uh, which are set to begin later today. And that's a deal that's seen trade more than treble between Mexico, the United States and Canada in its 23-year history. But it's also in Donald Trump's crosshairs. He's promised to renegotiate the agreement, but change won't come easy, as Alexander Hurst now reports. I am going to renegotiate NAFTA. And if we can't, we're going to do it. We're going to go a separate way because it has been a disaster. When the North American Free Trade Agreement came into effect in 1994, it created the world's largest free trade area. Today, it covers over 480 million people in Canada, the United States, and Mexico, whose combined GDP is near $20 trillion per year. And in NAFTA's 23 years of existence, trade among the three nations has more than tripled. Many economists consider NAFTA to be a success that increased investment and contributed to overall economic growth. However, the deal has been heavily criticized for negatively impacting American jobs in specific industries while doing little to raise wage levels in Mexico. The Trump administration has three apparent goals to favor American manufacturing. Changing the rules governing the origin of parts of manufactured products to ensure that more goods are produced entirely within the NAFTA zone, eliminating dispute resolution panels that supersede national courts, and introducing the power to impose tariffs when imported goods negatively impact U.S. industry. However, a renegotiation is likely to be complicated as the American proposals are sure to be met with counter demands from Mexico and Canada. Our objectives are clear. To reinforce NAFTA as an engine of job creation and economic growth, to cut red tape and further harmonize regulations, to make NAFTA more progressive, and to uphold the elements in NAFTA that are key to our national interest. As talks begin, the timeline is ambitious, with a hope to reach a deal before elections in Mexico and the U.S. next year. Our Washington correspondent Philip Crowther also has been looking at this story now and what it means for Donald Trump's presidency. Five full days of negotiations begin this Wednesday here in Washington, the first of many rounds. And these will be long, hard negotiations between the United States, Canada and Mexico. And they will show how hard it can be to keep a campaign promise. Donald Trump, in his own words, had said that he was going to terminate NAFTA, the free trade agreement between the United States, Canada and Mexico. But according to the U.S. president himself, the leaders of Canada and Mexico then called him and asked for the free trade agreement to be renegotiated instead. And that brings us to this point. As is the case with much of what has happened during this Donald Trump presidency, the aim here is to keep a campaign promise and to satisfy those voters who got Donald Trump in the White House in the first place. These are voters from the manufacturing centers like Pennsylvania and Ohio, those who voted for Donald Trump and against free trade for a renewal of manufacturing in the United States. But the free trade agreement, NAFTA, won't disappear anytime soon. That is a campaign promise that will be broken. But Donald Trump instead will have another main aim from these negotiations that could last for months, of course. He wants the trade deficit with Mexico to be lowered considerably. If he manages to do that, and again, that is a bit of a big ask for Donald Trump and the negotiators, then he at least will see these renegotiations of NAFTA as a success for the United States. Philip Crowther reporting there from Washington. Stephen, you're turning to China next, uh, which has gotten a warning from the International Monetary Fund. The IMF says the Chinese economy is growing faster because the government won't rein in what it calls dangerous levels of debt. The fund upped its growth forecast to 6.4% in the next three years, compared to 6% previously. But with that, the IMF says debt levels outside of the financial sector will exceed 290% of GDP in five years' time. More debt, the fund says, could limit Beijing's ability to handle any fresh financial crises. Now, how are the markets reacting? Not much worry on the Asian markets anyway from investors over that warning from the IMF. Things pretty calm today in Asian trading. The Nikkei in Tokyo finishing the day down, but gains in Hong Kong and in Seoul. European markets starting the day in the green, though. Uh, the only company, or rather one of the companies who isn't having such a good day is the Danish shipping giant Maersk. Their shares down almost 3% after saying a cyber attack would cost it up to $300 million. 
Finally from you, Stephen. Domino's Pizza is having some trouble in France with apostrophes. That's right. The pizza chain's online delivery system has had some difficulty understanding some French addresses, and in particular, the apostrophes in addresses like Rue de l'Université. The glitch is being blamed for the company's disappointing sales figures in France. Its CEO says the problem has now been resolved, but investors weren't impressed. Its shares in Sydney fell by nearly a fifth in trading on Tuesday, wiping the equivalent of more than 500 million euros off the company's value. Stephen Carroll, thank you very much for that.